The Other History of the DC Universe Book 1 dives into great detail into the life of Jefferson Pierce and history the big main DC comic books rarely even touch, resulting in an utterly fantastic and real depiction of a universe filled with caped alien protectors and men who can run faster than the speed of light. John Ridley, who will soon be headlining the new Batman book in Future State, doesn't shy away from the grime and dark corners of the DC Universe, beginning with Jefferson finding his father dead, which puts him on a collision course with fate as he tries to find his place in the world, constantly pushing himself to do and be better as his life progresses through the 70s and 80s, with the emergence of heroes like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman and the Justice League, which while changed the landscape for many, Jefferson's life and the lives of many in suicide slums just gets worse, since while these larger than life heroes will happily deal with space aliens and mad scientists, schoolyards and communities are inundated with drugs drugs and robberies, things which as Jefferson puts it, can be seen as less than or beneath the mighty Justice League. Through all of John Ridley's really relevant and biting social commentary about how African Americans and people of colour were treated during the Nixon, Carter, Ford and Reagan eras in America, we are also treated to Jefferson learning about his powers and using them to fight against gangs like the 100 and corruption in his community, but for all his work, instead of being branded a hero like many of the other white heroes, he's branded as a menace and a vigilante, putting him at odds with heroes like Superman, which doesn't deter the man at all. In fact, it strengthens his beliefs, leading to him demanding to know why Superman won't help his people and help in the little things. Donning the persona of Black Lightning, Jefferson continues to operate despite being called a vigilante, doing everything in his power to help and stop crime until one Halloween, Jefferson sees the fruits of his labour in that of a child dressed as Black Black Lightning, learning from the child's father that thanks to Black Lightning, their streets are now safer. Soon after welcoming his second daughter Jennifer into the world and meeting the vigilante vixen, Black Lightning is tested by the Justice League, something Jefferson knows never happened to any of its other white members, the members who weren't helping clean up the communities. Jefferson knew this was all just so the League could just tick a box and say that they are diverse and have a black hero on the team, so he declined their offer, telling them to go find another person, maybe even Jon Stewart. Soon after, a day came where Black Lightning did the unthinkable. He killed. In an incident on a train where a thug was looking to prove himself, the thug's gun went off when Black Lightning hit him, killing Trina Shelton, a student of Jefferson's. Thanks to her death by his actions, Jefferson gave up being Black Lightning, burning his costume to ash and turning his back on his hero life, throwing himself back into his work and his shattered home life as others like Vixen made their debut, quickly becoming a high level heroine herself, which made Jefferson envious, if not a little jealous. Soon Batman came to visit the man, breaking into his home with an offer for a mission to help a fellow black man in an unnameable country. Jefferson soon found Batman to be the only person he found to be truly terrifying, as the hero leverages Jefferson into helping him, going to Markovia where the Dark Knight is joined by a group of unlikely heroes, a group Jefferson felt at ease with, and a team made up of heroes who didn't normally have the opportunity to be heroic. From this mission on, the Outsiders were formed and Jefferson found himself a family that he hadn't had in years. Sometime later, Jon Stewart accidentally destroys an alien world, unable to stop a bomb from detonating. Because of the guilt the man felt, Jon tried to kill himself multiple times, however his power ring prevented him from doing that. Jefferson, with some pushing from Tatsu, sought Jon out, bonding with the man and learning after all these years, Jon was just a man trying to keep his head up above all of the assumptions that were made about him being one of the first black heroes. Jefferson offered Jon something he hadn't had in years human connection, treating the man as human and not as Green Lantern, but also as a man trying to figure out how to get out of the shadow of his past, something Jefferson knew all too well. Soon after, the Outsiders broke apart thanks to a falling out with Batman, and because of it, Jefferson found himself needing a new beginning, shedding his need to be superhuman and realising that there were more and more people like him emerging, so he hit the road like he did all those years before, moving on to Brick City and continuing his role as 
as a teacher to at-risk youth, knowing sometimes being regular is the most heroic thing to do. Jefferson knew this wasn't the end of Black Lightning though, making himself a new costume just in case, since knowing while he was done with the hero thing for now, in the world he lives in, one never knows when he might be needed again. The other history of the DC Universe book one was one of the best, if not the best comic I have read this year, perfectly chronicling Black Lightning's history and in turn, chronicling the history that books like the Justice League or Batman don't even touch. The book flawlessly blends real life events and errors in American culture with DC Comics's larger than life heroes, showing us what these events and heroes are like not just for regular people, but for people who for a lot of American history have been oppressed in one way or another. Showing heroes like Superman and Batman from a perspective of a person who can see past all of their bravado and theatrics and know what they kind of really are or were at this point in time in DC Comics history. I think with a lesser writer this could have come off as mean spirited or, or maybe even overly critical but John Ridley through Jefferson does a really fantastic job of making it all feel warranted. Ridley's portrayal of Jefferson is utterly fantastic as he's just a regular guy. He's not some larger than life mysterious hero that we see in books like the recent Batman and the Outsiders. He's made human and he is a man who wants to be more than a man and strive to achieve more, but makes mistakes along the way because he is, after all, human, ending with him realizing that he doesn't need to be superhuman to be heroic, and he doesn't shy away from admitting his mistakes and arrogance either, fully aware that he doesn't have all of the answers, despite what some people might think, and he wants to learn them if he can. I thoroughly enjoyed this book and I'm really excited for the next two issues in the series, as well as Ridley's upcoming Batman book, because if it's anything like this, I think we're in for a real treat. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10.